In this video, we're going to take a trip back in time to the 1950s to uncover some of the beauty secrets that made women like Marilyn Monroe look so stunning. Hello lovelies, my name is Laura and in this video I'm going to take you back in time to the 1950s. This was a decade that gave us some of the most iconic women in history, like Marilyn Monroe. And believe it or not, many of their beauty secrets are still applicable today. So sit back and relax as I unveil some 1950s beauty secrets with you. The 1950s were a time of great change and nowhere was this more apparent than in the world of beauty. In the early 1950s, the looks that had been popular in the 1940s were still in vogue. However, by the end of the decade, a new type of beauty was beginning to emerge. Movie stars like Marilyn Monroe and Grace Kelly epitomized this new ideal with their hourglass figures and bombshell looks. Makeup also became more dramatic with women experimenting with brighter colors and bolder styles. As the 1950s came to a close, it was clear that the world of beauty had undergone a major transformation. The 1950s beauty was all about femininity <laughs> and perfection. Women were expected to have perfect skin, voluptuous figures, and impeccable style. To achieve this look, they relied on a variety of products and techniques, some of which we would consider quite drastic by today's standards. For example, many women used foundation to create an even complexion, contouring to define their features, and false eyelashes to give themselves dramatic batting eyelashes. The 1950s beauty was definitely an extreme compared to today's more natural look, but for the women of that era, looking their best was a matter of pride. In America, the 1950s were regarded as the heyday. During the post-World War II economic expansion, the nation saw a significant surge in manufacturing and residential construction. The 1950s were also regarded as being quite materialistic in nature because of the flourishing economy, the ease in which individuals could obtain employment, and the skyrocketing level of spending. People began purchasing and using televisions, as well as regularly purchasing and enjoying music. Due to the large number of soldiers who returned home and wanted to have a family, the 1950s also saw a huge baby boom. People relaxed because they could easily find work thanks to the flourishing economy and no longer had to worry about providing for their family. It is not unexpected that some of the most glitzy beauty trends in the history of the globe date back to the 1950s, which also saw a significant development in the cosmetic industry. In the 1950s, the traditional standards of beauty were starting to be challenged. Women were beginning to experiment with new looks and the confines of what was considered acceptable were slowly expanding. This newfound freedom was partly due to the increasing availability of beauty products as well as a growing interest in fashion and self-expression. Makeup was no longer just for special occasions, it was becoming a part of everyday life. And as women began to experiment with different styles, they started to redefine what it meant to be beautiful. No longer content to conform to society's narrow definition, they were creating their own unique visions of beauty. This shift marked the beginning of a new era in which women could express themselves freely and truly be their own selves. In the 1950s, beauty parlors were extremely popular. Women spent an average of two to three hours per week in beauty salons because they were so interested interested in procedures that would keep them looking young. Although a vigorous exercise wasn't very widespread, many people used weight loss procedures, manicures, facials, and hairstyle to obtain their attractive appearances. Many ladies reportedly sought out paraffin wraps, seaweed baths, suction cup massages, and even steaming facials according to a vintage beauty parlor documentary called A Visit to the 1950s Beauty Salon. Women used to lie down for hours at the salon covered their bodies and faces with lotions and potions, which were afterwards scrubbed off to reveal a fresh layer of glowing skin. Marilyn Monroe was one of the most popular actresses of the 1950s, and her style and beauty helped to define the fashion of that era. Marilyn's look was all about curves and glamour, and she popularized many of the iconic fashion trends of the decade, including pencil skirts, halter dresses, and capri pants. Marilyn was also known for her signature blonde hair and red lips, and she popularized many beauty secrets that are still used today, such as curl setting, 
and false eyelashes. In addition to her fashion and beauty influence, Marilyn was also known for her sex appeal. And she helped to make sexuality a more acceptable topic of discussion in mainstream culture. Thanks to Marilyn Monroe, the 1950s were a time of both style and substance. Marilyn Monroe was one of the most iconic actresses of the 20th century. Her unique look, a combination of feminine beauty and sex appeal, is still emulated by many women today. Thanks to her decades in the spotlight, Monroe had access to the best beauty secrets of the day. And while some of her methods may seem outdated or even dangerous by today's standards, there's no denying that she knew a thing or two about looking good. Here are just a few of Marilyn Monroe's 1950s beauty secrets. Marilyn Monroe avoided sun rays. She reveals why she avoided the sun, despite the fact that it was in trend in California, saying, I personally oppose a deep tan because I like to feel blonde all over. She was all about the alabaster appearance, so forget the bronzers and false tans so many of us rely on today. So she really liked that pale look. Marilyn loved a certain shade of blonde hair. If you ever wondered what hair color Monroe requested when she sat in the colorist chair, she says pillowcase white. It probably is not what you think. According to author Pamela Kia, Monroe had a team of hairstylists, including Pearl Porterfield and Kenneth Battelle, who bleached her hair every three weeks. Pearl Porterfield also took care of Jean Harlow's light blonde hair. She swore by a DIY dry shampoo called Johnson's Baby Powder, which she applied every two days to keep her hair fresh while avoiding washing it, which can harm the color. And she had a special tip for fuller lips in order to achieve her plump and pouty look. She used several lipsticks to give an appearance of dimension and plumpness. Her makeup artist would use up to five different shades of red, lighter on the inside, and darker plummy reds on the outside. A smart trick that lots of makeup artists still use today. So it kind of creates an illusion of depth. She was aware of the value of sleep. Marilyn Monroe, a woman who valued her sleep, slept in a large single bed for five to 10 hours every night. On her days off, she said, this is the one day I have completely free. In an interview with Pageant Magazine, she claimed, I sometimes wait two hours to wake up, just laying there and enjoying every last moment in bed. And when Marilyn gets ready for bed, she famously refused to dress for bed because she said that pajamas and scary nightgowns made it difficult for her to sleep. However, she did wear five drops of Chanel number no. five, which is also rumored to have infused into her ice baths. In her interview, she acknowledged that they questioned her. An example might be, what do I wear to bed? And Roe responded, Chanel number no. five, since that is the reality. And Marilyn Monroe loved ice baths, Marilyn was much ahead of her time, even though Wim Hof and many sportsmen have since made ice cold showers and baths popular, she allegedly used to take ice cold baths to maintain tight, firm skin. I feel like that would be so hard to do with plunge. I know Joan Crawford also plunged her face in ice water. The way she took care of her skin along with Audrey Hepburn, Monroe frequently saw the Hungarian dermatologist Erno Laszlo. Laszlo gave the actress a strict skincare routine that changed based on the time of the day and the occasion because the actress had dry skin and was rumored to have obsessively cleansed her face up to five times per day to prevent breakouts. She started her evening skincare routine with an oil cleanse with the Erno Lazel Active Felatil Oil followed by an application of the Active Felatil Cream and a rinse. Finally, she applied the controlling lotion. These goods are still available today and I use all of these on a daily basis. I love her um, Shake It Tinted Moisturizer as well. And Marilyn Monroe had definitely radiant skin and she had a lot of tricks to get this glow. And she would use layers of Vaseline under her foundation to help the skin catch the light. And she also used a beauty technique known as slugging. And she also liked Pond's Cold Cream and other well-known modern products like Elizabeth Arden's 8-Hour Cream and Nivea Cream as well as olive oil, which she reportedly used to moisturize her skin. So she really created a thick layer of Vaseline lean and sometimes eight hour cream on her face. And she wasn't a natural fitness enthusiast. Monroe explained her method to exercising. I don't count rhythmically like the fitness experts on the radio. I couldn't stand exercise if I had to feel regimented about it. We can all connect 
with that, she preferred a simple bus firming routine in which she lifted two five pound weights 15 times above her head while flexing her arms in the spread eagle position. I've tried this one before too, it's really good. Each morning she would work out at her bedside until she was exhausted. I feel like that is a good way to like wake up in the morning and kind of get yourself going. Women used every trick in the book to enhance their appearance and new cosmetics and hair care items were created to make it simple for them to do their makeup and hair at home. Women in the 1950s nonetheless pioneered the path for beauty aficionados worldwide and have inspired many to rock the vintage looks from that era decades later, despite the fact that they were vastly different from the resources available to us today. Since there was a lack of makeup both during and after the war, many ladies benefited from its availability and recent advancements a decade later. Using an all-in-one compact powder as a foundation base was very popular. In the 1950s, pinks and and orange reds were a popular lipstick and lip liners were also used to enhance the pout. Mascara gave the face more femininity and filling in the brows raised their arch. Wing eyeliner defined the eyes and made them appear larger. On the cheeks, Apple Rosy Rouge was frequently used. The brands we use today were also well known in the 1950s. During this glitzy age, Elizabeth Arden, Revlon, Maybelline, Avon, and other popular cosmetic brands were in high demand. The first cream-based powder, the Cream Puff, was introduced by Max Factor in 1953. In 1958, the legendary wand mascara was introduced. In the 1950s, wearing makeup was associated with more than just finding a husband. The necessity to keep up with a moving and expanding society increased as a result of the American baby boom and the substantial increase in the number of women entering the labor market. Some of the companies that were established in the 1950s are still tremendously well-known today. The 1950s were the decade of the cosmetic business. Popular high-end makeup companies like Elizabeth Arden and Helena Rubinstein were selling expensive products. Both brands are still accessible today and have even grown into skincare, perfumes, gifts, and wellness. Boots revived its number seven line of cosmetics and skincare in 1952 after it nearly vanished during the war. Even though they were established far before the 1950s, Max Factor and Avon were still the top beauty brands. For instance, Max Factor created products that regular women wanted to use, while Avon offered women the chance to work for themselves in the cosmetics industry. In the 1950s, significant brands like Biotherm, which was launched in 1952, Clarins in 1954, and Cheesedo International debuted in 1957. Grace Kelly, Audrey Hepburn, Marilyn Monroe, Doris Day, and Elizabeth Taylor were the leading ladies of the 1950s beauty standards. Therefore, it's not surprising that regular women tried to resemble these famous people. Thick cream foundations and flesh-colored powders were in style throughout the fashionable 1950s. It was the mass effect age, especially for famous people and affluent ladies. In addition to the thick base, other common beauty trends included crimson lipstick and attractive eyes that were highlighted particularly to produce a glamorous appearance. Eyeshadow was simple and typically had one pastel color, such as pale pink, green, light brown, blue, or yellow. Eyeliner and mascara defined the eyes. By the middle of the 1950s, drugstores sold nail polish and companies like Max Factor and Maybelline urged women to do the same to emulate their favorite Hollywood stars. To keep their nails looking pretty and feminine during the period, women frequently gave them an almond or oval shape. Both reds were quite popular because they preferred to match the color of their lipstick with the color of their nail polish. Now let's take a look at some of the popular 1950s hairstyles. In the 1950s, a woman's hairstyles underwent a significant change, as did everything else, and celebrity hairdressers became influential in popularizing particular hairdos. The first hairdresser to receive a screen credit for their work was Sidney Guleroff, who was the most well-known hairdresser in the Hollywood film industry. In his 40 years at the MGM Studios, Guleroff worked on more than 
thousand films, including Dewberry Was a Leading Lady, where he styled Lucille Ball's hair in 1943. Lucille maintained her red hair color for the remainder of her life because she was so happy with the results from his work. The 1950s actress Grace Kelly hired him to do her hair for her 1956 nuptials to Prince Rainier of Monaco because he was so renowned in Hollywood. The soft bob worn by Marilyn Monroe, the Italian cut worn by Elizabeth Taylor, the gammon look, which was Audrey Hepburn's signature appearance, and the sleek page boy or under bob loved by so many women, including Grace Kelly, are just a few of the hairstyles that were made popular by renowned stylists like Gilleroff, Lewis, and Don McPherson. In the 1950s, new hair coloring methods and supplies allowed women to customize their hair color. For instance, in the 1950s, one-step products that made it simple to bleach, shampoo, and color hair at home entered the market. Some products allowed ladies to paint their hair with bleached gold or silver streaks, which launched the fad of adding black or color streaks to the hair, usually the fringe. And when it comes to 1950s, a woman's fashion was all about looking fashionable. It was the time when fashion magazines were first starting to become very popular and women were constantly looking for new ways to stand out from the crowd. While some 1950s fashion trends are still popular today, others have fallen by the wayside. Here are a few 1950s women's fashion trends that were popular during that decade. The first one are poodle skirts. These knee-length skirts were named after the poodle prints that were often seen on them. They became extremely popular in the 1950s and are still worn today on special occasions. Another one is bolero jackets. These short jackets were often worn over dresses or blouses and added a touch of elegance to any outfit. Next, we have cat eye glasses. These glasses became popular in the 1950s thanks to celebrities like Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn. They are still worn today as a nod to vintage style, and I love the cat eye look. Another popular trend is kitten heels. These low heels were designed to be comfortable and stylish, and were often seen on young women in the 1950s. I actually love kitten heels too, because I'm taller, and I find them less intimidating and easier to walk in. Like most things, fashion was thrilling and diverse in the 1950s, and the air is still frequently brought up in discussion today when it comes to fashion. For diverse taste, they were new hues, modern silhouettes, and stylistic possibilities. The 1950s were known for its feminine vintage aesthetic, and a graceful appearance was in demand. Dresses with nipped waist, pencil skirts, gingham and polka dot clothing, capri pants, bobby socks, and shirts with Peter Ben collars were some significant daytime clothing items. A ball gown was also popular for an evening look at the time. And now, when it comes to some 1950s beauty secrets. In the 1950s, most cosmetic procedures were done by hand. 1952's beauty schedule for busy young brides suggested an at-home beauty routine of DIY hair and pedicures. On Tuesdays, a pedicure that included foot exercises was advised after applying nail polish. Hair had to be washed once a week while receiving a rough, calm massage on the scalp. Body hair was to be eradicated with weekly shaping. And a beauty staple in the 1950s were all-purpose face cleansing soaps. In the 1950s, bathrooms were a common occurrence. Bodies were washed with all-purpose soaps like Pears Transparent Soap, Palm Olive, as well as many other 1950s beauty soaps like Zest and Lux Toilet Soap. Great skin was attained with a straightforward beauty routine. According to Glamour Days' 1950s beauty book, some girls used a lubricating cream or lotion to to prevent skin roughness or chapping. However, costly creams and powders are not required. Healthy skin can be kept appealing with just a few straightforward treatments. To clean, cold cream was applied to the face, and cold cream, which is made of water and fats, like beeswax, was used to wash dirt and makeup off the skin, and this was the most popular cleansing technique in the 50s. Although it was used to remove makeup before a bath, centuries after the first recorded uses of cold cream in 1650, in the morning and evening, women would apply the cream to a piece of tissue or cotton wool and rub the filth away. With the help of high-end and prescription cream-based cleansers, we still choose this strategy because it moisturized the skin and stopped moisture 
moisture loss. And I actually still use Pond's Cold Cream. I love it for removing my makeup. And here are a few strange 1950s beauty tips. Women believe that if they wanted their hair to look lovely and healthy, they need to brush it at least a hundred times a day. And this was a popular thing in the 1950s. And this seems a little bit absurd, especially with the widespread knowledge that doing that can actually cause serious harm to your hair if you're over brushing it. If one were to act in such a way, they would be more likely to make it frayed than healthy. Another fascinating truth is that doing this is a surefire way to end up with split ends, which is never fun. And yes, that's definitely true if you're over brushing. In the 1950s, women used cold dust and a Vaseline to their eyelashes, among other odd things to make them look longer and thicker. This may seem strange now, but before mascara became a very mainstream, this was a popular technique. They utilized this concoction to make their eyelashes look darker and thicker. Even yet, mascara was readily available. It was simply perhaps not as widely used as it is today. I think things were just like more expensive back then, more of a novelty. The well-known makeup item has been around for a while. In fact, tubes of it were first made accessible in 1917. And sleeping with hair curlers were also a popular and common 1950s beauty technique. Due to the fact that this was a highly fashionable hairstyle in the 1950s, many individuals have observed their grandmothers or other elderly relatives walking around their homes in the evening with hair curlers on. I remember in The Marvelous Miss Mabe Maisel, she always had her hair curlers on. Women seem to have made many sacrifices during the period, including their comfort while sleeping in order to look good. I feel like, yeah, that would be so uncomfortable for me to have the curlers in. I don't know if I could do it. They would even go as far as to sleep the curlers back then, which would seem to be really unpleasant today. I know a lot of vintage enthusiasts that still do this. Some of them also made an effort not to move about while they slept in order to prevent excessive movement of the curlers. And it seems to be common in the 19th 1950s to only wash your hair once a week. I actually only do that now. Even if some individuals still do it, going a week without washing one's hair seems odd today, but for me it doesn't. Uh, I know a lot of people that can't do it, but I just use dry shampoo in between. But this was quite normal in the past. For some people, going more than a few days without washing their hair can make it oily and give it an unpleasant smell. But that's what dry shampoo is for. That's why Marilyn Monroe used the baby powder. However, it appears that women at the time did not have many problems with that. If they thought it was time to wash it, they would occasionally even delay doing so for a little while. They would merely give it a light rinse. So maybe instead of actually using like all the products, they would just kind of rinse their hair in water. To achieve the best possible results for their skin, they underwent some extreme measures in the 1950s. Many ladies in the 1950s began obtaining treatments like steam facials. However, it also appears that several things that people still practice now were invented in the 1950s. People who wanted beautiful skin started visiting spas in the 50s to take luxurious seaweed baths. Additionally, they began applying a paraffin treatment to their hands and feet. Cream rinse for your hair was an indulgence in the 1950s. Cream rinse used to be regarded as a high-end product and women used it no more than once per week. Contrary to what some individuals may believe, cream rinse and conditioner are not the same thing. I remember when I was growing up, my mom always called conditioner cream rinse. I actually never heard about conditioner, I don't know, till way later. She just always called it cream rinse, so I thought that was the name. Even if they do resemble one another in certain ways, cream rinse does not perform all the same functions as an excellent conditioner. It's most likely used to assist someone in detangling their hair or knots. Since they only performed this once a week back then, it could not have been enjoyable because a week is a large amount of time for knots to build up. But obviously you're gonna be combing your hair. But it's true though, when I wash my hair, it's definitely like I really have to get through the tangles and comb through it. 1950s beauty secrets are anything but boring. From using Vaseline as a makeup primer to curling your hair with soda cans, women of the 1950s knew how to work with what they had to create a, a unique and beautiful look. One of the most popular 1950s beauty secrets was the use of baby powder as a dry shampoo. The simple trick helped absorb excess oil and keep your hair looking fresh and voluminous. Women also used Vaseline to create the illusion of fuller lips and many still swear by this method today. 
So next time you're looking for a beauty inspiration, be sure to check out some of these 1950s classics. You might just be surprised at how well they hold up today. The 1950s was a decade that gave us some of the most iconic beauties in history, including Marilyn Monroe. While Monroe may have been one of the most famous faces of the 1950s, she was far from the only stunning woman of her time. Thanks to a combination of careful grooming and some unique beauty tricks, woman of the 1950s radiated elegance and glamour. While many of the 1950s beauty secrets are still relevant today, some of them would definitely raise eyebrows. For example, while we now know that smoking is bad for your health, in the 1950s, many women thought it made them look more glamorous and helped them suppress their appetite and lose weight. And while we now know that sun exposure can cause skin cancer, in the 1950s, many women used baby oil to get a deep, dark tan, which is terrible for your skin. Despite the fact that some of their beauty practices would raise eyebrows today, there's no denying that the women of the 1950s were beautiful. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out some of my other vintage beauty secrets videos. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!